Hi, I'm Jeremy, and I'd like to talk oh, to you about the UD5005 Universal Blu-ray Disc Player from Marantz. Hmm. For over five decades, the name Marantz has been synonymous with the very best and superior quality audio and now home yeah, entertainment. The UD5005 is much more than simply a Blu-ray disc player. It has been specifically designed to be the only disc player you will ever want, playing all format. The only disc player you'll ever want, eh, Jeremy? That is a big call, me old son. Let's investigate and see if that turns out to be true. Right, so following on from the video I made recently about how you can use an old DVD player as a very cheap and in some cases free CD player, I thought I would show you what you can get if you up the ante a little bit and instead of spending zero to let's say 30 pounds, you spend a bit more. In my case, I spent 175 pounds on this Marantz UD5005. You, I've had a look on eBay just before making this video and there was one that was um, not tested that was about 130 quid so you can flip a coin there and maybe get a good deal. Um, the rest that were tested and seemed to be working all right range between about 230 and 400 pounds. That seemed to vary greatly. Those of you in America, you're spending four or 500 UK pounds, it seems to me, to get these on eBay. Maybe other markets are different. Uh, but I wanted to go through this player because I think it's very, very good. I've been extremely happy with it. So I wanted to outline some of the things that I think it does very well and uh, give you a bit of an overshot. So if you wanna, might want to check one out yourself. Um, so first of all, UD5005 is the model name and the UD in this stands for Universal Disc. That's important because not only is it going to play your CDs, it's also going to play DVD audio and also SACD. So um, it will actually take out DSD audio, uh, I think only by the um, HDMI cable, uh, if you're doing audio out via, via HDMI, but nevertheless, it will take DSD out and, and give you complete um, SACD, uncompressed DSD files from this player. So that's really brilliant. I haven't got into doing, um, <laughs> doing SACDs yet. That's another rabbit hole for me to go down in the future, but it's nice to know it's there in the future at any rate. If you've got some of those, this is probably one that might be worth checking out. Um, so the other thing they say about it is that it uses audio file grade components. Now, I always get a little bit sort of leery when I hear stuff like that, simply because what does that really mean, right? You know, everybody's got their own opinion of that. It seems more like a marketing term, but the components in it do seem to be uh, very good. And I'm gonna just open up this lid a little bit here first so that you can have a look. Um, because a lot of you in the comments will know a lot more than me. So if you want to stop the video and have a look at some of this stuff, you can tell me more than I can tell you what is on that board. Um, but I think as far as I'm concerned, the most important thing is that they've obviously spent some time looking at the components in there and also the way that everything is shielded away, um, the way that... Uh, you know, components are, are sort of separated out from each other, not just in the hardware with the chassis and everything, but also as far as um, the, there, there are software things or firmware things you can do in order to sort of separate things out. So, for example, if you're just playing music via DVD audio, via SACD or via CD, you can actually shut off the circuitry that controls everything else. That might, for example, be something to do with the LCD panel on the front. It might be to do with the, the video processing. All of that circuitry gets shut down so that there is no interference. There's no noise coming through from that part of the system that could potentially interfere with the audio signal that's coming through. So they've obviously thought about it and that's a big difference between something like this and the systems I was showing you the other day, which uh, basic DVD players, and yes, they will do a fine enough job, but this one does take it to the next level. In terms of the DAC that's being used in this, it's a Texas Instruments unit, it's, it's a PCM1781. Uh, it sounds pretty good, if you ask me, although I tend to run any of these type of things from an external DAC, so I'm choosing to outsource the um, the conversion to, to, some, to something else. Uh, but if you were to use just the onboard DAC on this, I've found it to be a very pleasing sound, uh, very rich, 
certainly fairly sort of detailed, um, although not as much as uh, as I've been able to get, even from the Fozzy Audio Q4 that I actually am using currently in the system. No doubt if you were then to go to the next level up or a couple of levels up in DAC, you would probably see an even greater uh, improvement in sound quality. But that's all there for the future. You can start at least with a DAC that sounds very reasonable and very acceptable and certainly a cut above what you would get from the type of units that I was showing you the other day. Although, as I said with that one, you can just as easily use the optical out in those and use an external DAC. But anyway, the internal DAC is pretty good. Um, the build quality on it seems very, very good. It would be nice if this front fascia plate was metal. I would like that. This is actually plastic on the front of here. Um, so it would be nice if it was a metal one. Um, I think when they were new, this was a sort of entry level one in the market. There was a UD5007, uh, 007, uh, that was slightly higher above. This, I don't know if that had a metal facial plane. I suspect not. They all probably came out of the same mold. Um, but in terms of, you know, feeling sturdy and everything like that, the fact that it's plastic doesn't really affect the quality of it. And I like the sort of Marantz design language. They had this on the amplifiers that they had at the time and the, just the basic CD players that they had um, with these slightly curved edges to them. They look nice. They, 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 they've, got a, they've got a sort of, you know, quality look to them. And if you get components that all match together also, if you're the sort of person that likes to stack these things up, then they do all look very nice, all stacked up in a row. So that's rather good. Um, I've been very happy with this. I have had it now for getting on for two years. I bought it secondhand on eBay. As I said, I paid £175 for it. Um, the only issue I've had in that time is a slightly sticky drawer. Now, bear in mind that these units came out originally in, I think, about 2010, something like that. Um, let's see if it says on here. Uh, it doesn't say, but I think they came out roughly sort of 10, 12 years ago, something like that. So you can expect when you're buying older components that certain things are not going to have stood the test of time. And one of those things is the grease that they put on the rails that move the drawer in and out, right? 12 12 years of grease just getting stuck there, obviously it's going to dry up and it's going to get gummed up. And that's indeed what had happened to this. So I had to take it apart and I had to strip the old ganky grease off it and re-grease it and then it worked fine. And I haven't had any other issues with it. The components themselves are all fine. I've had no issue with any capacitors or anything like that. Um, you know, they do, as they say, use audio file grade components. Whether or not that means they just sound nicer or they're also more durable, I don't know, but certainly I haven't had any problems with this one. But bear in mind that anything you buy on the used market, particularly that's sort of, uh, say, 10 years old or more, um, you know, particularly if you're going back, you know, sort of 20, 30 years or more, you are going to start to see the degradation of some of the electronic components as well as some of the mechanical components in that system. So if you are the sort of person that has no access to someone that knows how to repair them and you don't know how to repair them yourself, this is going to be a problem and it will cause you an enormous pain because all you will be doing constantly is wasting your money on stuff that then either is broken when it arrives or will break fairly quickly and then you have to sort of send it back and start from scratch. In which case, spending a few more quid in the first instance and buying something new might be the answer. Now this when it came out was I think around five, six hundred quid, something like that. So it wasn't a cheap unit, but you can buy units of a similar or slightly less, sort of three, four hundred pounds, six, five, six hundred pounds from the likes of Cambridge Audio, from the likes of Morantz. There are people out there that are making new CD players now. So if you just don't want the hassle, I would recommend that you do that. However, if you're the sort of person like me, as I've stated before on this channel, I'm tight and I like to sp save my money wherever possible. If I can get something for 175 quid that otherwise I'd have to spend 400 quid on, I will do that and I will roll the dice and let it land where it may and sometimes that pans out. In this case, it definitely has. In other cases, you get burned, but I'm prepared to take that risk. Um, so, yeah, if you're looking for, for one of these, they are around. Um, I would suggest looking at this and also the five... 007, which is the model slightly above that. Um, yeah, just ha have a look at what else is out there. The, 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 the thing that also um, really attracted me to this one, as opposed to many of the other sort of Blu-ray player or DVD players that were coming out at the time, was simply that it looks more like a hi-fi component. It, in fact, they made a, a CD5005, which has the exact same facial page as this and, and look, looks kind of identical. So it, it's designed to, to fit within a, a, a sort of home hi-fi type of environment and looks very nice within all that stuff. 
If you've got something, I don't know if I've got one immediately to hand, I don't, um, but if you've got something that's uh, just a sort of regular DVD looking thing in amongst a bunch of hi-fi components, to me, that doesn't quite look as good. So that's it. Let me know in the comments. Um, where, how do you play your CDs? Do you have a dedicated CD player? Do you have something like a DVD or Blu-ray player that does double service? And did you buy it new or did you buy it second hand? Let me know in the comments. It's always nice to know this stuff. As always, please subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. And also, I don't know if you've noticed, but since I've got over the 500 subscribers, I'm now allowed to put a little super thanks button on my videos, which means that if you want to press the button, you can buy me a cup of coffee or something like that. And I promise you I won't spend it on coffee. I will spend it on CDs, which I shall review on this channel. So if you want to do that, press the little thanks button and it'll take you through the process. And I think it's a couple of quid. You can put whatever you want to, but I think the default is too. Two, two bucks. Two bucks American. Anyway, that's it. Um, no more e-begging from me. I will um, leave you to it and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Adios.